And time now for the France 24 debate. Hello and welcome to the France 24 debate. I'm Annette Young filling in for Francois Picard. Well, according to US President Donald Trump, this man is a, quote, fantastic guy. I'm talking about Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, who was the first leader in the Arab world to congratulate Trump on his election victory. He's a uh, fantastic guy. He took control of Egypt, and he really took control of it. And I thought it was a great meeting. We met for a long time, actually. We had a long meeting. Mm -hmm. And got along. There was a good chemistry there. You know when you have good chemistry with people, you're the king of that. And it was a very good chemistry, good feeling between us. And as the American leader pointed out, the two had indeed met, met rather last September during his election campaign. And today they've reunited in Washington. Shirley Sitbon takes a look at what's on the agenda for discussion. President el-Sisi and Donald Trump had their first meeting even before Trump was elected president. When the Trump administration settled in the White House, el-Sisi's name came up in the first press briefing. Earlier in the day, the president spoke with Egyptian President el-Sisi. They discussed ways to deepen the bilateral relationship and support Egypt's fight against terrorists. Getting extra military aid from the U.S. is a top priority for al-Sisi, whose army has been fighting armed groups in the Sinai Peninsula. For Trump, Egypt's war on jihadist militants is central in the fight against the Islamic State group. I think the key topics on the agenda will be fighting terrorism and Egypt's war against terrorism in northern Sinai, along with the intelligence cooperation between the two countries. Sisi's visit in the White House is the first since he took power in 2014. Trump's predecessor, Barack Obama, had always kept the Egyptian president at a distance due to his poor human rights record. But for Trump, Sisi is the man who brought back stability. The Egyptian leader can also play a crucial role in settling the Israeli-Palestinian issue. But first, the U.S. president may have to reconsider some of the promises he has made. Trump's serious consideration of moving the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem will cause a great deal of embarrassment to the Egyptian administration. After Sisi, Trump will host King Abdullah. Like Egypt, Jordan has a peace deal with Israel, and the Jordanian leader could strengthen efforts to resume peace talks. And joining me to discuss this uh, critical visit is William Jordan, a former director with the U.S. State Department. From Washington, D.C., Michelle Dunn, a director at Carnegie's Middle East uh, program. And by Skype from Orlando, Florida, Ashley and Sarah, the executive director or member, rather, of the American Middle East Coalition for Democracy. And we're hoping that later in the program we're going to be joined from Cairo by Khaled uh, Dayoud, the president of the opposition party, Al Dostur. Thanks to all of you for joining me. William, let me start with you. Different presidents, different stories. Uh, of course, Barack Obama keeping Al Sisi very much at arm's length uh, because obviously Washington taking a rather strong stand, perhaps not as strong as some would like, but certainly a stand against uh, Egypt over its human rights record. This administration, however, seems to be doing the complete opposite. Well, for a very simple reason. This administration considers the struggle against the Islamic State to be its number one priority in dealing with the region. And if there's one thing that uh, President Assisi is definitely on the same wavelength as Donald Trump, it's having to do with fighting uh, Islamism, uh, whether it's the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt or groups like the Islamic State. Uh, just remember, Egypt has also uh, been operating to a great extent outside of its own borders in Libya, which is something that um, that the Trump administration uh, and indeed the Obama administration before it quietly endorsed and, and agreed with. Um, Egypt has its own struggle in the Sinai with um, offshoots, supposedly, of the Islamic State. Uh, and so, you know, it's a perfect fit as far as Donald Trump is concerned in terms of the very uh, narrow, simple, uh, 
one-dimensional policy that he wants to push at the moment, which is to fight the Islamic State. Uh, Egypt is going to be, in the form of President C uh, Sisi, uh, one of the staunchest allies the United States could possibly imagine. Now, obviously the problem in that is that, uh, is that what's going on in Egypt and what's going on elsewhere in the region is more than just uh, this binary conflict between uh, Islamists or jihadists and um, secular uh, authorities. There's a lot going on that has to do with uh, uh, governance that has a lot to do with respect or, or lack of respect for human rights. There's a lot that has to do with economic development. There's a lot that has to do with uh, unequal social distribution of wealth and uh, and power in countries. Uh, these are all issues that, as far as the Trump administration is concerned, don't matter. Put them off to the side. Focus on getting rid of the Islamic State. That's your mission number one. And General Sisi, President Sisi, is a perfect partner for Donald Trump at this point. Michelle, if I can just bring you in at this point, uh, as I said earlier, Donald Trump has described Al Sisi as a fantastic guy. Obviously, these two men seem to speak the same language. Well, President Sisi has put a lot of energy into this relationship, and I think that's what you see, President Trump responding to that. It really has been President uh, Sisi taking the initiative. He made sure um, to meet with Trump while he was still a candidate. By the way, he also met with Hillary Clinton. Uh, but, but Sisi was clear in his statements that he was hoping that Trump would be elected. And he uh, made sure to be the first foreign leader to call Trump. I understand he even made a pitch to be at the inauguration. So, you know, uh, and I think President Trump responds to this. You know, he's getting a kind of uh, adulation, you know, uh, from President Sisi. Uh, Ashley, if I can bring you in now from Orlando. I mean, this is a case of two men talking tough. But at this stage, as William just said earlier, it seems to be only one clear element of the White House's foreign policy, is that is to defeat the Islamic State group. We're still not clear as to what the other parts of this foreign policy are. Well, I think there are two segments uh, for what uh, the relationship between the US and Egypt. What the US want from Egypt is a leadership in the Middle East to fight terrorism. And what Egypt wants from the United States is a Marshall Plan to revitalize the Egyptian economy. There is no way you could have a strong Egypt today in the Middle East unless you have a strong economy behind it. Terrorism has been in the area for the last 50, 60 years, in one form or others. It doesn't make any difference. I think different ideologies in the Middle East and the structure of the whole Middle East require that you have one country to lead. President Trump feel that Egypt with their secular type structure and society and culture may lead very well and the number of population. But again, weak economy will not give Egypt the strength that they want for the fight. Khaled, uh, coming in from Cairo, can I just ask you this? Uh, as we just heard there, these are two men who clearly have a common bond in de wanting to defeat the Islamic State group. Uh, the Egyptian media, I know, is describing this trip as historic. But what exactly is the Egyptian president expecting from this visit? Well, um, I guess, first of all, uh, we have to put in the visit in the context uh, of how the previous administration of uh, President Barack Obama treated uh, uh, President Sisi after he took over uh, office in uh, June 2014. Uh, obviously, uh, President, uh, former President Obama uh, was not uh, happy at all with uh, Sisi's uh, human rights record, uh, uh, particularly thinking uh, that this is actually making the situation in Egypt worse, not any better, uh, through depending mainly on uh, security matters. And we even saw Obama freezing uh, the military assistance uh, that uh, Egypt has been getting since 1979 for almost a year. 
until he decided uh, to uh, resume it, uh, but under strict conditions. Uh, Obama refused uh, to meet uh, with uh, uh, President Sisi uh, uh, while he was at the White House. And of course, uh, this visit and the reception in Washington uh, by the new president, Mr. Donald Trump, uh, is of course a shift in policy. I mean, uh, this is um, uh, um, uh, an indication uh, that Mr. Trump uh, gives priority to uh, the so-called war against terrorism. And uh, in this respect, um, and as uh, Michelle Dunn has uh, mentioned, uh, there is this uh, chemistry uh, that has existed between the two uh, leaders uh, even since uh, Mr. Trump was a, a Republican candidate, not even a president yet. So, of course, this is an important shift for President Sisi. He believes that um, this kind of uh, recognition by uh, the new Trump administration uh, will give him more weight uh, on the regional level. Uh, so uh, he's very happy uh, with this uh, change. And that's why we've seen uh, that uh, the Egyptian official media uh, was very welcoming of the Trump uh, victory after it took place. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, they did not want uh, uh, someone like Hillary Clinton uh, to be the U.S. president because they felt that uh, she's going to continue uh, with the Obama policy. So he's looking for more military support from the United States in the fight against terrorism, especially in Sinai. He's looking for perhaps uh, more economic assistance uh, in, in a very difficult time in Egypt after the uh, deal with the IMF and the devaluation of the Egyptian pound. And of course, uh, he wants, uh, of course, U.S. Uh, help as well in other regional issue uh, issues which are of importance uh, for Egypt, uh, namely the situation in Libya where we have uh, basically a disintegrated state with uh, lots of uh, uh, different groups and uh, some, you know members of the Islamic State fighting in Libya. And if possible, I mean that uh, President Obama would also, uh, sorry, uh, Mr. Trump, uh, President Trump would also help uh, with uh, restarting the Israeli-Palestinian negotiations, although I think personally that this is not a top issue for or top priority uh, for President Obama, uh, for President uh, Trump or uh, for the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. And William, that's an extensive shopping list on the part of President al-Sisi. Is he likely to get everything that he wants? I don't think so. I, I think in part because at this point um, there's a lot of flux in Washington as far as the uh, how the budget is going to be redivided and with all of this talk about the State Department taking a big hit. Uh, I can easily think of some things like uh, the Middle East Partnership Initiative being being slashed to the bone, if not eliminated entirely. But I mean, with Egypt getting uh, getting well over a billion dollars in military and economic assistance, I mean, it will it, it with 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 King Abdullah from Jordan, another major recipient of American assistance, coming to the White House in the next few days. Um, if you're going to seriously think about how all of this stuff is going, how all of this assistance is going to be scaled back worldwide in order to meet the budget targets that the uh, administration has laid out, it's hard for me to believe that you know it's necessarily going to be uh, you know the same priority is going to be given to Egypt as before. Now it could very well happen, and I think that's one of the reasons why this visit by Sisi for him is very important. But how the administration is going to play all of this still remains to be seen because there, there are, are a lot of details budgetarily as well as just in general policy terms that have yet to be, yet to be explained. I think right now what's happening is a sort of a, um, with this visit, the visit so far, uh, there's one earlier and then the one to come by Jordan's King Abdullah. Uh, there was a recent visit by the Deputy Crown Prince of uh, Saudi Arabia uh, to Washington. Um, with these visits, you're starting to see on the Arab side, just as the visit of Benjamin Netanyahu, you're starting to see sort of the main interlocutors Trump wants to deal with coming to town and discussing the new orientations of the administration. Now, how those are going to play out, we already get an idea from the recent uh, recently announced decision to sell F-16 fighters to Bahrain, despite human rights-related reservations by the previous administration. So, I mean, you're starting to see things come together. You're starting to see things take shape. But how this will all ultimately play out and who will be satisfied or dissatisfied remains to be seen. Michelle, um as we just discussed there, and as William just said, this is a country that receives more than a billion dollars in aid, yet under the general, repression has been widespread. I mean, security forces have jailed tens of thousands of people, committed, no doubt, human rights abuses, including the torture 
and forced disappearances of people who criticise the regime. Yet we have a US president who calls him a fantastic guy. Uh, well, first of all, let, let me just add something uh, to what William Jordan said about the assistance picture. I think he's quite right that things are not settled in Washington. But I would note that the initial budget released by the Trump administration converted military assistance to Egypt to a loan, not to a grant. Um, which it, it has been a grant. It has been a $1.3 billion annual grant for many, many years now. Now, that could still well be changed. Uh, the initial Trump budget is just the opening move in a long negotiation with the U.S. Congress. Uh, but William is quite right that the, the general inclination is to cut back on foreign assistance. So if President Sisi is coming to Washington expecting to receive uh, assurances uh, or promises of increases in military and economic assistance, I doubt he's going to get that. Uh, there were some other things he wanted as well, for example, such as having the Muslim Brotherhood declared a terrorist organization in the United States. And I don't think that's likely to happen this week either, for some different reasons. But to return to the human rights abuses that you just mentioned, yes, it's an abysmal human rights situation in Egypt. It's far more extreme uh, than the human rights situation was, for example, under President Mubarak, who was removed in 2011. Much more extreme than that. And these subjects are related. And I think President Trump and his administration is going to come to realize that in short order, that Egypt's value as a counterterrorism ally is really very much constrained by the extreme state of human rights abuses inside of Egypt, which are fueling radicalization. There are tens of thousands of young people in Egyptian prisons subject to torture and abuse, and there is a lot of evidence that they are being radicalized. For example, there was a terrible uh, bombing in a Coptic Christian church in Cairo in December 2016 that killed 29 people. The man who carried it out was uh, a young man who uh, had been tortured in Egyptian prisons. And after he was released, he went to the Sinai and joined a radical group and came back to Cairo wearing a suicide belt. So, the, you know, this kind of thing, it is really, um, it, it makes Egypt very ineffective as a counterterrorism policy. Sisi has been very ineffective fighting his own insurgency in the Sinai, which has now affiliated itself to ISIS. And Sisi is not active against terrorists, for example, in Syria or Iraq. He's tied down in his own country, and he's not succeeding very well there, both Mitch. because of the military methods and because of the lack of political or economic strategies to enfranchise youth. Michelle Dunn, we're going to just have to leave it there because we're going to have to press pause. It's time now for a short break. Do stay with us here on France 24 for the second part of the debate. <laughs>